Hello, welcome to your virtual field trip with the Ward Beecher Planetarium. My name is Eleni. I'm a college student at Youngstown State University. I'm a student employee at the Ward Beecher Planetarium, and I'll be hosting your field trip today. Before we get started, I do want to say that I like to ask a lot of questions during my field trips. And I'm going to do that today, and I hope you'll try to answer them. If you ever need more time to answer one of my questions, you can always pause the video and try to think of an answer, then hit play to see if you got it right. Let's get started. If you've never been to a planetarium before, you may be wondering what a planetarium is. This is a picture of the Ward Beecher Planetarium. You might be thinking that it looks a lot like a theater, uh, and I know the picture's cut off, but there's no movie screen or stage down in the front of the room. What do you notice about the planetarium that's different from other rooms you've been in? Look at the ceiling. It curves around, right? If you could turn around, you would see that the ceiling curves all the way around in a big circle. But it's not a flat circle. It's a circle that meets up all the way at the top, kind of like an upside down cereal bowl. We have a name for this shape. We call it a dome. All planetariums have dome-shaped ceilings, and visitors can come in and sit in our seats and look up at the ceiling. And with the help of this robot here on the left, we can project or shine light that shows you where thousands of stars are in the real nighttime sky. So you can come into the planetarium at any time of the day. It doesn't even have to be nighttime. And see different patterns in the night sky with the help of our robot, Kronos, again on the left side of this picture. Today I'm going to be using a virtual planetarium. For parents and teachers, this program is called Stellarium. It is completely free. You can download it on your phone or your computer, uh, and you can use it to look at the stars. It's pretty fun to play with, so I encourage you to check it out. Again, it's called Stellarium. So here I have the planetarium set to June 20th, the first day of summer, because it is almost summertime, or it's already summertime, depending on when you're watching this. But this is set for June 20th, but all the things I'm going to show you today are things that you can see anytime if you're looking at the sky in the summer. So the time is about a little after one o'clock in the afternoon. This is a little bit after you eat lunch. You can see the sun is still up. And we actually have a special name for this time. We call this Solar Noon. Because if you look at this big red letter, this stands for south. The sun is directly south. So these letters here are showing us our cardinal directions, which you may have heard of. Like I said, S stands for south. But if we turn around over here, now we're facing the W. What do you think the W stands for? What cardinal direction starts with W? That is west. And then if we turn around this way, we have this big red N. What cardinal direction starts with N? That is north. And if we face this way, we have a big red letter E. What cardinal direction starts with the letter E? This is east. You may have learned a way to remember these. My favorite is never eat sour watermelons. You may have also heard never eat soggy waffles, and it goes like this. Never north eat east sour south watermelons west. So that's a good way to remember your cardinal directions. So again, the sun is directly south, high in the southern sky right now, a little after one o'clock. But is the sun always high in the southern sky? Does the sun stay in the same place all day or does it move across the sky? 
what happens as the, the day goes on. Let's see what happens. I'm going to speed up time because I can do that with the planetarium. And we're going to see which way the sun moves throughout the day. I want you to go ahead and point to which direction you think the sun is going to move. Do you think it's going to go this way, or this way, or this way, or do you think it's going to stay still? Whatever you think. So let's see what happens. It's going this way. What direction is that? That is west. As time goes on throughout the day, the sun is moving to the west. So we know that the sun always rises in the morning, somewhere over the, in the east, moves across the sky through the south, and always sets somewhere in the west. But, as you can see, it's not exactly west. It's a little bit over to the north of west. There are actually only two days out of the whole year when the sun rises directly in the east and sets directly in the west. We call these days equinoxes. We call them equinoxes because on these days, these are the only days when there are equal amounts of sunlight and equal amounts of dark darkness. So one day is 24 hours. Half of 24 is 12. So on the equinoxes, there are 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of darkness. And those are the only days when the sun rises directly in the east and sets directly in the west. It's summertime now, so the sun is rising north of west, and it has a longer path to travel across the sky. So we have more hours of daylight than darkness in the summertime. And that's part of the reason why it's warmer in the summer. On the other hand, in the winter time, the sun will set south of west, and it'll have a shorter path to travel across the sky. So we'll have more hours of darkness and less hours of daylight. And that's part of the reason why it's colder in the winter time. But let's take a look at the stars. So let's watch the sunset. We're going to have to stay up a little bit later. Let's stay up until about 10.30. This might be a little bit late for some of you, but that's how late we need to stay up to see the stars in the nighttime sky. Before I get started, I want to talk about something called light pollution. Do you know what pollution is? Pollution is anything bad that we put out into our environment, anything that hurts the environment. So light pollution is any light that we shine that causes problems with the environment. Specifically, we're talking about light that shines up in the sky and washes out the stars and makes it hard to see. Uh, this light comes from things like headlights on cars, or street lights, or billboards, or city lights, or any lights that we have shining at night. They all contribute to washing out our stars and making it a little bit more difficult to see them. Light pollution is worst in cities or places where there are a lot of people. So if you live near a city, you might not see as many stars as you're seeing in Solarium here. But a lot of the stars I'm going to talk about today are very bright and you'll be able to see a lot of the patterns that I show you today no matter where you are. But if you go out away from the city, out in the country, somewhere far away from all the city lights, you'll be able to see a lot more stars. So if you ever get the chance to do that, I encourage you to go out and look up and see what stars you can see. So right now, you can see that we're facing north because we have this big red N to help us. But we don't have big red letters in the sky to help us in real life, right? Well, we can use the stars to figure out which direction we're facing, and that'll help us talk about what we're looking at in the sky. 
one pattern of stars that can help you figure out which direction you're facing is very common. You've probably heard of it. It's seven bright stars that make the shape of a big spoon in the sky. I want you to look around for a minute and see if you can find seven bright stars that make the shape of a big spoon in the sky. Of course, we call this the Big Dipper. See if you can find the Big Dipper. All right, if you're having trouble, these four stars here make the cup of the Big Dipper. And these three bright stars here make the handle of the Big Dipper. And that is your Big Dipper. So how does this help us tell which direction we're facing? Well, using these two bright stars here, we call these the pointer stars on the front edge of the cup. You can trace a line from the bottom of the cup through the top and you'll come to this bright star here. Do you know which star this is? This is the North Star. The North Star always points us directly north, and you can always find it using the Big Dipper. The cool thing about where we live near Youngstown, where the Ward Beecher Planetarium is located, we can always see the Big Dipper up in our sky, so the Big Dipper will always be there to point us to the North Star. And once we know that we're facing north, we know that east is to our right, south is behind us, and west is to our left. So I've shown you the Big Dipper and you may be thinking that the Big Dipper is a constellation. You may have heard of constellations. Constellations are groups of stars uh, that make patterns and shapes in the nighttime sky. But the Big Dipper is actually not a constellation. There are 88 official constellations, and they're used by scientists to map out the sky and to talk about where different things are in the sky. So just like the United States is divided into states, and when we're looking for something, we say it's in that state. Well, when scientists are looking for something in the sky, they say it's in that constellation. So. I'm going to show you all the constellations we can see right now. Those are the outlines of the constellations. But they also have borders, just like states. So the sky is cut out like a puzzle into 88 different pieces. And scientists use these pieces to talk about the nighttime sky. So as you can see, the Big Dipper is not its own constellation, but it's actually part of a much bigger constellation, which we'll get to in a minute. But before I get to that, uh, I do want to tell you what the Big Dipper is. The Big Dipper is what we call an asterism. An asterism is any pattern or shape that we draw with the stars in the night sky that is not an official constellation. So asterisms are really cool because they help us find things like the North Star. Um, but also, you can make your own asterism. You can go out and look up at the nighttime sky and draw any pattern or shape that you want and come up with your own asterism. I think that's pretty cool. So the Big Dipper is part of a constellation called Ursa Major, or the Big Bear. And I will show you how to draw the Big Bear. So the handle of the Big Dipper makes her tail. Her back leg comes out like this with two little toes. <laughs> her body comes forward like this. Her front leg comes like this, and here's her face. But if you're having trouble seeing her, here's her outline again. But wait, if there's a big bear, shouldn't there be a little bear? There is. We already found a star that's in the little bear, or the constellation Ursa Minor, when we traced through these pointer stars in the Big Dipper and found the North Star. The North Star is actually the end of the tail of the little bear or the end of the handle of the little dipper. So here's the tail or the handle and here's the body or the cup. So 
So there are Ursa Minor and Ursa Major, the Little Bear and the Big Bear, and your Night Sky. And you can always find these constellations somewhere in the north in your sky. But I told you that I was going to tell you, show you some springtime and summertime constellations. Uh, so let's take a look at those. We do have seasonal constellations that you can see at different times of the year. And since summertime just started, then we can see some springtime constellations and some summertime constellations right now. So first we're going to look over to our to the west and look at some springtime constellations that are in the western sky. Again, we can use the Big Dipper to help us, but instead of using these stars here, we're going to use the handle of the Big Dipper. Do you see how the handle curves or makes an arc shape? Well, if you extend that arc we can arc to this bright star here called Arcturus. Arcturus is the brightest star in a constellation called Boötes, the herdsman. So I don't know how to draw a herdsman, but the cool thing about constellations is you can see them as whatever you want, as long as you are using the stars within the borders of the constellation, you can draw it however you want to. I see Boötes as an ice cream cone. So Arcturus, this bright star, makes the point, the tip of the ice cream cone, and these three stars make the cone, and then there's a scoop of ice cream on top. I like drawing it this way because there's another constellation right next to Boötes, right here, that looks like a second scoop of ice cream that fell off. This constellation is called Corona Borealis, which means the northern crown, because it's a crown shape. This is my favorite springtime constellation because it's so easy to see. But we're not done because once we arc to Arcturus, we can also spike down to this bright star here. This star is called Spica. And Spica is the brightest star in the constellation Virgo. Virgo has a lot of faint stars, but Virgo, which starts with the letter V, is kind of shaped like a V. If you use these stars here, you can draw a big cursive V. And that's how I see Virgo. So again, we use the handle of the Big Dipper to arc to this star called Arcturus and spike down to this star called Spica. And we can actually curve to another constellation called Corvus. So this is Corvus the Crow. I see this constellation as a crow's foot or even a dinosaur foot if you want to see it that way. This is the back of the foot. Here's one toe, here's another toe, and here's another toe. So if you've ever seen a bird's foot, that's what it looks like. So throughout the summer, these you might be able to see these springtime constellations uh, somewhere in your western sky. As you get later into the summer, they will be set by the time the sun sets, so you might not be able to see all of them. So in that case, I'll show you some of the summertime constellations now. To see the summertime constellations, we're going to look towards the east. So again, we know which direction north is because we know that the Big Dipper is in the north and points us to the North Star. So now we want to look over to our right, which is the east. Summer is a really great time to look at the stars because there's this bright pattern right here. This triangle shape. This is another asterism. We have three bright stars that make the shape of a triangle, and it's best seen in the summertime. What do you think we call this asterism? We call it the Summer Triangle. <laughs> How creative, right? At least it's easy to remember. The cool thing about the Summer Triangle 
is that not only is it really easy to find, but these stars are the three brightest stars in their own constellations. We'll start with this bright star here. This star is called Vega, and Vega is the brightest star in the constellation Lyra the Harp. Uh, if you know what a harp is, it's, it's a type of musical instrument, uh, and it has a frame, and it has big strings going across it. So the way I draw Lyra is uh, Vega is the top, and I trace it down to these stars here that make the top frame of the harp. This is the bottom frame. So you could think of this as the frame of the harp. And then imagine strings running down through here. So that is Lyra the harp. The next star in the summer triangle is this bright star here, which is Altair, the brightest star in the constellation Aquila the eagle. So the way I see Aquila is Altair makes the eyeball and this is the eagle's head, a body down like this, one big wing here and one wing here. So that is how you can see Aquila the eagle. And then the last star in the summer triangle is this bright star here called Deneb. Deneb is the brightest star in the constellation Cygnus, the swan. So the swan's body comes forward like this. Here's the head. And we've got two big beautiful wings. And Cygnus is flying across like this. It almost looks like Cygnus is on a path or a track or something. What do you think this, this milky band of light is in your nighttime sky? This is the Milky Way. The Milky Way is our home galaxy. The Milky Way is a big group of billions of stars. And it looks like a line or a trail going across our sky, but the Milky Way is actually a big flat disk like a pancake. The reason we see just a trail rather than seeing a big circle like a pancake is because we're inside the Milky Way. So imagine if you were looking at a pancake from the side, it looks flat. That's why the Milky Way looks flat across our sky. And Cygnus is flying along the Milky Way. There's some other little constellations that you can see near the Summer Triangle. One of my favorites is this one down here. This is Delphinus the Dolphin. So there are a lot of faint stars, but they're very close together, so it's still a pretty easy pattern to make out if you look right below the summer triangle. This is the face of the dolphin. I see a fin up here, a tail over here, and another little fin down here. So that's how I see Delphinus the dolphin. And then there's one other little constellation right in the middle of the summer triangle, right here. This is called Sagitta the Arrow. So there are all of the cool constellations that you can see using the summer triangle. And throughout the summer months, after the sun sets, it'll appear higher and higher in the sky. There's one more constellation that I want to show you. It's in the south. This is my favorite constellation to see in the summertime, and it's real easy to remember because it's in the south, in the summertime, both start with S, and its name starts with S. This constellation is called Scorpius, the scorpion. So, Scorpius, summertime, south. Pretty easy to remember. And the best way to find Scorpius, the scorpion, is to look for this bright reddish star here. This star is called Antares. And it's really easy to spot in the sky because it has a reddish color and it's pretty bright. And this is the heart of the scorpion. So Antares is in the middle of the body. These three stars make the body of the scorpion. Here's its face. And it's got a long tail that curls around like that. 
So there is Scorpius, the scorpion. So those are your summertime constellations. And I showed you how to find the North Star. Showed you Ursa Major and Ursa Minor, which you can always see. And your springtime constellations. Remember, we use the Big Dipper to arc down to Arcturus in Boötes, the Herdsman. And we spiked down to Spica in Virgo. And we curved to Corvus the Crow. I hope that you'll go out and try and find these constellations, and I hope you'll show them to someone else. I hope you learned something today, and I hope next time you're outside at night you look up at the sky and try and find some of these patterns. And don't worry if you can't find all of them, because you can always draw your own. Thank you for joining me for your virtual field trip with the Ward Beecher Planetarium. If you have any questions, uh, tell your teachers and they can email us at the Ward Beecher Planetarium and myself or one of the other staff members would be happy to answer them for you. Thank you for taking a virtual field trip with the Ward Beecher Planetarium. I hope to see you soon.